Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your miners have practically built them yourself. <laughs> Flock term Tigergarten. Tigergarten Flak Tower, or commonly referred to as the Zoo Tower, was a fortified flak tower that ex existed in Berlin from 1941 to 1947. It was one of several flak towers that protected Berlin from Allied bombing raids. Its primary role was as a gun platform to protect the government building district of Berlin. In addition, the Hoch Bunker, or blockhouse, was designed to be used as a civilian air raid shelter. It also contained a hospital and a radio transmitter for use by the German leadership and provided secure storage, storage facility for art treasures. The Zoo Tower was a first generation flak tower. Like all the flak towers, it had a main facility that housed the anti aircraft guns. This is called the G building and a smaller building that had sensory equipment like radar and whatnot. This was a smaller building and it was called the L building. The two were connected by an underground canal that not only held the or a uh, landline to transmit crucial information needed of flights of incoming enemy aircraft but cables and lines of electricity and water and heating. There was one cellar floor and six upper floors. Above that the tower rose to roughly the height of a 13-story building. The second floor was used to house the most priceless and irreplaceable holdings of 14 museums of Berlin. The rooms were, were climate controlled. On the third floor was a 65-bed hospital. In 1947 the British Army blew up the tower complex. The smaller L Tower was first and it was blown up successfully on the first attempt on July 28th of 1947. The larger G tower, however, however, required far more effort, and it took three different times of trying to blow it up, one time using 25 tons of explosives to finally crack this thing, as you can see here. After demolition, the Berlin Zoo took over the land where the main tower had been, and the smaller tower area is presently the site of the Hippopotamus Park. Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to the Kit Hoarder Stash. And today I have a interesting piece for you. It's a 1 3 50th scale model. Now I've been doing a bunch of 1 3 50th scale ships, but this is not a ship. But it is a fortress, I'll tell you that. Check this thing out. I'm excited about it, as you can tell. This is the Flak Tower Berliner Zoo G Tower. And this is by, who's this by? This is by Tacom. Um, it's in 1 3 50th scale. I could only imagine if it was in a larger scale how grand it would be. In 3 50th, it's going to be, it's going to be neat. And it would be neat to have on a, a shelf, uh, maybe near a Trippets or a Bismarck, something like that to, you know, kind of compare it to. But let's take a look at this. This is very intriguing. They've got two of these. They've got this one, and they've got another tower, I believe, um, from a different city in uh, Germany. But this is the one that was outside of the Berlin Zoo. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Ooh. Ah. Okay, so here's our kind of our breakdown of different parts. It looks like we have some photo etch in there. And here's side views of what it should look like when we are finished. It looks like it has some anti-aircraft guns on it. Mmm. Ah. Small-scale anti-aircraft guns. That can be interesting. All right. Let's, let's see what's in this box, because I know you're going to want one, and uh, you're going to want to know what's in here, so let's take a look. So here is the instructions, and this is a little history on the Flak Tower. 
and well you you can you can read it it's it's pretty amazing these are these were really amazing structures uh and very very durable so here's our parts breakdown oh this is going to be one of those that's really hard to turn the pages i see so we'll kind of pre-turn them how's that Okay, looks like we have building the base and the base of the barbettes. Quite a bit to that, actually. A lot more than I thought there would be. Looks like we have a photo etched crane, which would be nice. And then putting the sides on this thing. Ooh, and building our anti-aircraft guns. Take a look at that. Very, very interesting. And our directors. Ooh, looks like we have some 88 millimeter flat guns and some twin 88s. That's kind of neat. And then placing those. And then finally the painting. Stone gray, yeah. Anyway, interesting. A little bit to it anyway. Ah, look at the photo etch. So we have the crane. A uh, bunch of parts that I just can't identify. Little teeny dots right there. I don't know what those are. Wow. Got some small steps. I'm used to working with some small stuff in 350th scale, but wow, there's some real tiny things here. Okay, let's get into the parts. Break down. Here are the walls. Let's break down the walls. I know, terrible. Uh, give you some idea how you know how tall those are. Looks like about uh, two, two and a half inches. So there's four walls. And what else we got in here? There is, ooh, wow. Here is the 88 millimeter flat guns. We'll see if we can get these in such a way that you can actually see them. And some of the others, I'm going to have to look up, sorry, because I don't know that much about German anti-aircraft weaponry other than 88s. Um, so I'll have to look up and see what they all are. But these look like the 88s here. Very beautiful. I mean, the moldings are the moldings are impressive. Very crisp and clean and just yeah, just beautiful. So there's two of those sprues. That's sprue E. And this looks like the other anti-aircraft guns. This is in a Ziploc bag. Oh boy. Ziploc bag, just exactly. <laughs> okay, this is sprue N. And you can see the guns in the breeches here, and some shields, some other, looks like these are a little bit different style gun here. So those are our, our flat guns. This was some of the stuff that I noticed, this is sprue J, some of the stuff that I noticed at the, the bottom, the base of the tower. And there's two of these sprues. Not a, an overabundance of stuff, which is good. It's, man, there's just a lot of, a lot of photo etch and that intimidates me a bit, so... Here are the uh, bases of the barbettes. Whatever you want to call them, battle. I don't know what to call them, but the side columns that go up. And this is sprue K. Okay. There's only one of those. And here is the base. 
wow, I'm just looking at the molding on this. The stairs look great. I'd sure hate to, I'd hate to have to run those stairs though. Uh, yeah, here it is. And it looks, again, it looks crisp and clean and just well molded. Very, very nice. And this must be the, the base, the very, very bottom base here. And that's it. That's, that is it. There's just not, um, not a ton of parts, which I like. I'm not a, I'm not a huge builder, as we all know. I like to be able to get it finished and, and looking really neat. That's where I like to, to do my work. So just the, just the plastic parts give you some idea if you can uh i can't really see in there too well but there's the plastic parts not not a whole lot in that box and then like i say a whole bunch of photo etch which we'll see how much of that i wind up actually using crane for sure but anyway all right so i'm excited to uh, to get this built and i'll take you along when i do build it a little bit later this spring, we'll go through and we'll build this thing and get it all um, weathered up and make it look pretty cool. So, yeah, how exciting. And uh, you can get this, I want to say they're around the $50 mark, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, just depends on where you go. Uh, know that Kit Links uh, has, has them and can get them very quickly. So, yeah, if you want one of these get on it. They're awesome. Thanks for joining us, folks, and we'll see you again next week.